The Journey to Becoming podcast is all about the changes, transitions, and transformations we encounter on our journey to aligning with purpose and living life with intentionality, fulfillment, and impact. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and my mission is to help those starting their entrepreneurial journeys or simply shifting gears to better align with purpose by sharing the journeys of others, offering practical tips and strategies, and providing encouragement to help you pull through whatever obstacle is standing in your way. So I invite you to sit back, relax, and join me on this journey of discovery. Joining me today is Danny Wade. Danny is a productivity coach and the creator of Beat the Overwhelm, where she takes you on a journey that includes mindset management, effective goal setting, creating positive habits, avoiding distractions, because you know we all have those, commanding your time, and accountability and momentum. Danny's approach consists of a healthy dose of perspective, managing your inner dialogue, focusing on the things you have control over, and breaking things down into manageable chunks. I'm so excited to have Danny joining us and sharing her strategies for beating the overwhelm. Welcome to the show, Danny. Thank you, Sabine. It's great to be here. I know for myself and for my audience, it's so easy to get consumed in all of the things that we have to do. So I am really excited uh, to get some tips, to get some tricks, to just make things easier. But before we go into your Beat the Overwhelm strategies, I would love to hear a little bit about you. Tell our listeners, what is your story? Okay, so I am a wife. I have two girls. I'm still working full time as a senior sales exec in Martech. And I'm also a property investor. And as you said, I'm a productivity coach, which has led me to building the course that you just talked through. And then in my spare time, you'll find me in the gym or socializing or traveling. Those are three of my passions outside of productivity. Awesome. I think it's funny that you said spare time after you listed all of those things. So I I just want to know, how do you create spare time with all of those responsibilities? Yeah, it's, it, um, that is one of the questions that was continually asked of me and which is how I found my niche, if you like, and my purpose of I was always interested in coaching I did goal mapping coaching for quite a while so helping people set goals effectively the thing I was always asked was how do you do it all and I think the fact is that no one does it all so it's about making a choice and taking control of your life so being in command of who you want to be, how you want to live your life, what's the goal, what's the end goal, and what does that mean you need to do now to be able to stay on track towards achieving whatever it is you want to achieve. When we first talked, you shared with me that you were at this place, right? Because there was a catalyst. Something happened to get you to this place where you're, okay, what I'm doing is not working. I need to find a different way. Tell us about your journey to coming to this place of, okay, wait a minute, something needs to change here. Yeah, there were a few moments. I admittedly have always pushed myself really hard. I've been in sales for over 21 years now. I used to think that I thrived under pressure and that I thrived when things got tough and I was proud to be busy. I was proud to be pushing myself harder than other people. And I genuinely thought that was okay. (laughs) When looking back, there were times when I was very reliant on sleeping pills, extremely stressed. And then it came to head when I completely burnt out and I think that may mean different things to many people but for me burning out or recognizing signs of you're about to burn out means not being able to make clear decisions so feeling like you're in a fog waking up lacking motivation when you're usually pretty motivated So all of these warning signs were there, but I genuinely thought that 
I wouldn't burn out. <laughs> I did think that I would be able to keep going. I've always taken regular holidays. So it was like work hard, play hard. But then I did burn out. And then that made me realize that your health has to come first. So the underlying thing throughout the whole course is, yes, have goals. Yes, push yourself outside of your comfort zone. Make the right choices. But really look after yourself at the same time. Because otherwise your body will choose when it's going to take that break. Oh, yes, it will. And as someone who has experienced that a couple of times in my career, I, I know the, that feeling. So I love the fact that you shared some of the signs that you are either burnt out or you are headed in that path. So once you realize that, okay, I am in that place, what were some of the first or some of the initial things that you started to do or practices that you started to incorporate in your life or in your day to help you move away and, and actually heal from that space of burnout? Yeah, there's so much to it. But I'd say one of the biggest things was having realistic expectations of myself. So being someone who had always pushed myself really hard and would always compare myself to others and would, there were so many healthy practices I had from years of self-development but I was still pushing it beyond what it should be. Setting your priorities for the day. My, even if it was three, admittedly, before I burnt out, it was more than three. Having more than three priorities for any day is ridiculous. So you just feel like a constant failure just because you're constantly setting yourself completely unrealistic targets because you want to push yourself. And then suddenly it's just on a daily basis, even though you are achieving and you are moving forward in the right direction, you don't feel like you are. And that in itself can be really detrimental because it's all about where your head's at, having the right level of self-belief, which deteriorates fairly quickly when you feel like you're failing on a daily basis. That's a really great point. And what I've seen with working with high achievers, sometimes because we're used to carrying so much of a load, it's often hard for us to take that step back. One, to recognize that, okay, our load is too hard, but also that we need help. So I'm curious, once you got to that place, did you seek out help? And, and how did you get to that place where seeking out help didn't equate to failure in your mind? I'd love to hear a little bit more about your process. Yeah, so I didn't seek help in the sense of counselling. I took a closer look at more of the self-development side of things. I've been on the immersive courses, including Tony Robbins, NLPs, all with a focus of how do I improve myself? How do I be in a better mindset? How do I increase my self-belief? How do I control that inner voice? And um, all of these things, how do I really visualize my goals and believe I can achieve them to really help with the momentum? So there were lots of elements to it. One of the things that I would say that I decided quite a while ago now is anything that I want to be successful in, I get a coach. If I want to be fit, I have a PT. For my property investing, I've got a property mentor. For yeah, everything I want to do, I will look to an expert because I definitely was someone who just took everything on and tried to do it myself. And that in itself, looking back, is really silly. <laughs> and, you know, trying to figure out everything when someone else has already figured it out and they can save you a ton of time not making the same mistakes and learning from the best. Yeah, I think I've spent a lot <laughs> of time, effort, money on self-development, but then also anything I want to be great at, then I do seek for assistance. That's great. And thank you for sharing that. The reason why I ask that is because sometimes it is so hard for us 
to ask for help or seek help or even just admit sometimes to ourselves, this is not working. So kudos to you for seeking assistance through these other gurus like Tony Robbins and through other self-development avenues. Now that you went through that place, it sounds like your beat the overwhelm has actually been the thing that was birthed out of your experiences. So I'd love for you to tell us a little bit more about that program, how it works and how you're leveraging it to help other high achievers either avoid burnout or get to the place where they can manage if they're there. Yeah, so it's a nine module course. It's been something that I've been working on for just over 18 months now. So it's been through many iterations. I've run masterminds with this as a base and all sorts to just get it to where it is now and it will be live by September this year, which is 2021. And for those listening to this in the future. So it starts off with self-belief. Like everything comes down to self-belief. And that's a really important place to start because typically as kids, we have quite a high level of self-belief. We're constantly learning, we're constantly achieving, whether it's learning to walk, talk, spell, read. So it's constant things that you're achieving. So life can be pretty good when you're constantly growing. And I think that's a really important thing for anyone to feel that they're constantly growing. Becoming stagnant isn't a healthy place to be in. So that's where we start is building up the levels of self-belief to back to where they should be. We really do a lot of work on the inner voice because it's something that I don't think enough people talk about. I really wish that I knew that everyone had that same inner voice, which is typically negative when you're growing up. And then we go on to the goal mapping side of things. So visualizing your goals, understanding what you want to achieve, why you want to achieve it, how you're going to achieve it and who can help you. And then once you have that, looking at what are the positive habits you need to build to support you on that journey to achieving your goals, then we get into more detail on how you manage your time, how you manage all of the commitments and all the hats that you're wearing in your life, avoiding distractions, as you mentioned earlier. That's a big one. I found when I was running this in masterminds, no matter how much detail or at what stage of the program we were in, I was always asked about how to avoid distractions and how to say no to things. So there's a whole module on that now. And then it goes into really planning ahead, you know, looking three months out, planning your time, planning your weeks and taking control of your days and then onto accountability. So ensuring that you have someone that you can talk to on a weekly basis that on the same path as you, like minded to help keep you accountable and help keep you on track and help support each other. That's great. We all need that for sure. I would love to hear a little bit more about two of the aspects, uh, specifically the positive habit. How do we retrain and create uh, positive habits? And also the distractions piece, because we live in a world where social media, our phones, our tablets, our devices are forever near us. And the temptation to be consumed in that information is, is always there. So how can we best limit some of those distractions? And something that you said was learning how to say no. So I'd love uh, to hear a little bit more about how you, you know, coach people through that process of creating positive habits and setting boundaries. Yeah. So it comes down to, and that's why we do the goal mapping first, because you re need to be really clear on what you want to achieve and the why you want to achieve it. Because if your why isn't strong enough, you're not going to achieve your goal. So it's having that as a visual reminder in front of you, your reasons why, so that when you don't feel like doing the positive habit or you feel like not doing the task you need to do to get you closer to your goal and you fancy just scrolling through social media instead, it's why are you going to make some sacrifices? Because the fact is, if you really want something and you want it enough and you want it in a certain time scale, you are going to have to make some choices. And it is about how can you help yourself make the right choices? What's going to get you 
up on the days you don't feel like getting up. So I'd say, yeah, taking a step back, that piece is aligned across both, is that you just have to know why you want to achieve your goal. And so in the positive habits, I see one of the biggest things <laughs> that people do is you suddenly get into this zone of you're really focused, you're going to do this, and you're going to build all of these habits and goodness knows how many you pick. And it's a huge transformational lifestyle or transformational things that you are just not used to. And that can work, but more often than not, it's not sustainable. So with positive habits, it's picking no more than three and having some sort of place where you can tick off each day whether that's online in your diary in a journal on a piece of paper or whatever that is but having a way to tick off 30 days of doing that habit it, it takes on average 21 to 30 days so that's something that you do really need to track to keep you on track and then once that's ingrained then you can start looking at additional habits but don't take on too much is what I would say for that. And then with avoiding distractions and saying no, the way I do that is I plan out my time months ahead. So for some that might feel a bit overwhelming, but I'd say try do at least three months ahead. So get your diary and whether it's on your phone, whether, yeah, again, however is best for you to manage your time, that is easily accessible to hand when someone says, do you fancy doing this? You've already got your time mapped out for the next three months. You've got weekends where you're like, actually, I'm going to do something social that weekend. And then you take control of that, book in that social stuff, book in that fun stuff, book in that spa weekend, whatever works for you, book that time in to make sure that you have downtime. So there is the other side of that, but also book in that time that you need to ensure that you have enough time to achieve your goals. So that's the piece we work on between positive habits and avoiding distractions and saying no is managing your commitments by blocking the time out. If something comes up and someone says to you, can you do this on this date? You've already got it blocked out for something else. So it's a lot easier. You're not just saying no, you're just saying, actually, I've got something else booked in for that day. Can we make it another day for when suits you? Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, and as you were speaking, I realized that's the pitfall that I tend to step into and, and many others is really that inability to manage your commitments, which creates the overwhelm, which creates the feelings of letting people down or that you're a failure. It's not uncommon to feel like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. So I love the fact that you talk about planning ahead so that you can actually take a step back and see where the gaps are and really understand how are you managing your time um, so that you can then manage your commitments and not feel overwhelmed. I absolutely love that. A couple other things that you said that I would love to circle back to, uh, but we're going to take a real quick break and come back and finish up the conversation about the process of the journey to beating the overwhelm. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. Wanted to take a quick break to share some exciting news. Oh, I'm excited to share the relaunch of my Transform Her program. This 90-day accelerator has been specifically redesigned to support those currently facing or considering a shift in life, career, or business. The 90-day accelerator is jam-packed with training, coaching, and a ton of personalized resources to move you from scared to confident, thinking about it to doing it, striving to thriving, and of course, stuck to unstoppable. So if you're at the place where you want to or are ready to make that major shift in your life, career, or business, but are feeling stuck, not sure where to begin, or are just scared, and trust me, there's nothing wrong with that because we've all been there, you can learn more about the 90 Day Accelerator on my website at www.sabinegideon.com slash transform her. On the site, you can schedule a complimentary call to see if the program is right for you.
So we learned quite a bit from Annie over these last few minutes around how to really manage your time, manage your mindset, manage the resources that you've been given or manage the things that, that you are committing to. But one thing that has stood out for me is that there's a lot of threes in Danny's process and in her journey here. So she talked about setting no more than three priorities to get through in a day. She also talked about planning ahead at least three months in advance. So if we look at it each quarter or whatever cycle you want to do it, and then she also talked about finding or identifying three positive habits that you want to incorporate and then giving yourself 30 days to do it consistently every day until it becomes a new habit. One last thing that Danny said that uh, sticks with me, whether it's a big goal, a short-term goal, a long-term goal, that we not only take the time to figure out the what behind the goal, but the why. And Danny talked about having that why is the thing that's going to be your anchor. Having a strong why allows you to push yourself or to motivate yourself because at the end of the day, we all get tired. We all have moments where we don't want to do things. And it's because we have a strong why. That's why we get up. That's why we do the business or that's why we go to work and achieve and excel in the way that we want to. So Danny, you have provided so much insight, so much practical tips and strategies for us to really take command and control over our days, over our businesses, over our lives. I would love to hear if you have one takeaway or perhaps one teaching that our listeners can walk away with in either journal about in their personal time, or maybe just sit down and meditate on. Yeah, absolutely. I think, as I said at the beginning, everything comes down to you, your mindset and your levels of self-belief. So with that, I created something which your listeners can download for free by going to beattheoverwhelm.co. It will be in the show notes and, and they can download their very own belief bucket. And the idea is that it's a simple image of a bucket. You start at the bottom and fill it up with everything that you've achieved in life. So your biggest achievements and also the biggest things that you have overcome in life. So it's great to look at all of the wins, but also when you're in not a great place, I think it's also worth remembering the times when you've pulled yourself out of bad places or bad situations or you've survived something. So having a mixture of the things you've achieved and the things that you've survived is really powerful to adding to your list of things that have built your levels of grit and resilience. I love that, the belief bucket, because how often have we achieved something and it's just like, all right, next. And we completely forget all of the lessons, all of the strength, all of the growth that we've experienced. And having something to look back at that shows us how much we've grown. So I love the belief bucket. Thank you so much for making that available to the listeners. Be sure to download it. Be sure to leverage the information that is there and actually do the work. So with that, Danny, we're going to switch gears just a little bit. You've learned, you've grown, you've done a lot of self-development. And at this stage in your life, you are a mom, you're raising kids, you're also helping people be the best versions of themselves. I'm curious to know, based on what you know today about life, about yourself, what advice would you give to your younger self? The biggest thing that we have an inside voice and we're able to control it. And for some reason, most allow that inside voice to be really negative. And sometimes it can motivate you and drive you to the level of negativity it can get to. It's really not healthy. If I was aware of that when I was younger, that this is something that everyone is dealing with. And by the way, you can control it and turn around that dialogue to be positive, then I think that is one of the most powerful things that a child could know. Lord knows if I knew about my inner critic <laughs> or my that inner dialogue and recognized I don't have to believe it and I don't have to accept it, 
goodness. So where could I be or where could we all be at this point? Thank you so much for, for sharing that. So lastly, Danny, where can our listeners find and or connect with you on social? So I'm on Facebook and Instagram. So both are under Beat the Overwhelm. So it should be fairly easy to find me on either of those. And there's also a free Facebook group if you're interested in joining a community of like-minded individuals and there's exclusive content in there and there'll be exclusive offers for the course later this year as well. Let's go ahead and connect with Danny. Uh, find her on Beat the Overwhelm, join the Facebook group, continue to glean from all of this knowledge and this expertise that she has given so that we can continue to achieve our goals without the overwhelm, without the burnout, without the frustration. With that, I want to thank you again so much, Danny, for coming on the show and for sharing such powerful insights with the audience. Again, the belief bucket, as well as the links on where to connect with Danny, will be included in the show notes. Please do share and download this episode and leave some feedback for us. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for having me. You've been a great host, and uh, I hope your audience enjoys it. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode. I hope you were able to grab a few nuggets and some action items that you can begin implementing this week. I'll be back next week with some more actionable tips to help you along your journey of transition, change, and transformation. In the meantime, please be sure to subscribe and leave a comment on the platform of your choosing. And if you really enjoyed this content, go ahead and share it with your network. Share it with a friend, a family member, whoever it is you know that might benefit from the information that was shared today. Until next time, have a wonderful and purposeful week.